Hello everyone, welcome to our class in the box. I'm Olivia Graham and I teach fine art and every week I show you how to use a new medium and complete a different project. So this week I'm showing you how to use gouache paint to complete daffodils like these. Um, so it's a bit of a longer project, it takes about nine steps on our handout just because there are more layers, there's a little bit more work to do in the clouds and in the foreground, so just a lot to take in. Um, so you can pause your project and you can leave it for a day or two, you don't have to complete it all in one go um, and so that gives you a bit more time to absorb and to uh, follow the different steps. If you've never used gouache, you are welcome to follow our warm-up tutorials just to show you some little tips on how to uh, mix the colours, how to overlap and um, just use the medium. If not, then you are ready to start this tutorial. Welcome back everyone. So today I'm taking you through a gouache tutorial to show you how to paint these daffodils overlooking the coast. Um, so we're going to use our gouache in a opaque way today and we're going to layer colours and really it's going to be an exercise in building layers and going from dark to, to lighter and just to, to show you how you can complete um, a similar project and then go on and do your own version. So um, it's going to take a little bit longer than uh, a previous projects we've done with gouache, uh, primarily because we are building a lot of layers. Um, and as you can see, um, I've put nine steps in our tutorial, um, just because um, there's a little bit more involved. So we'll start with the sky in the background and sort of building on the cloud. We're going to work on that part first and then we're going to make our way down. Uh, we'll add the sea and the underneath layers as here. Um, and then I've just shown you some two close-ups here for how we're going to uh, build on the landscape here. So that's going to be um, using our flat brush and mix of colours. And we're just going to apply it just to create some, um, some structure and some volume on, on, the, on the hills there. Uh, and then we'll just work our way, um, we'll work on the leaves and the, and the foreground and the flowers and so sort of build on um, the different layers and finish with the lighter colours. So, um, yes, yeah, so we need all the colours in our pack today. So we've got 12 colours and um, obviously you need your two brushes, a couple of jugs of clean water, a palette. And we're going to start with tracing our outline. And for this, you have graphite paper. So um, for those of you who are not familiar, you put the graphite paper on uh, the shiny side down on your watercolor paper and you just secure your outline on top. Make sure you don't press too hard because um, it will um, otherwise create a mark on your watercolor paper. The other thing I have is a spare sheet of paper here where I demonstrate and practice my colors before I commit to the final piece. Right, so first thing we're going to do is to trace our outline. So uh, for the sky, we are going to start using our two blues and the white. So on your palette, you need a large pea size of cerulean blue and the same with the tallow blue like this. We may have to add to this. Um, so um, just make sure you've got enough to start off with. And we will start with our flat brush. So we're going to make a mix. Um, sort of mixing the two blues and some white and we just practice here before we um, lay it on the paper and we're going to leave out the cloud um, and sort of build on the dark areas at the bottom and uh, add some white towards the top in fact you could we could also put the purple blue the purple sorry on the palette which we'll use in the second in the second photograph like we're showing here um, where we start building the darker areas to the bottom of the clouds. So a little um, wet your brush, so not too wet, and we're mixing our colours of two blues, 
to obtain a nice um, opaque consistency. So it's got to be nice and smooth and your brush has to be able to sort of glide on the paper and carry the paint, uh, drag the, the paint across like so. So this is a little bit dark. So now I'm going to add a bit of white. Yes, that's good. Right, so I'm um, dip my brush in a little bit of water just to make sure that it's it's got some um, uh, grip and it can drag the paint all across the, the page. And if we just keep our hand out next to us, um, we're just going to start paint the sky. Okay. So you will need to recharge your um, your mix here on, the, on your palette and that's something that we constantly have to do, sort of keep on building. And that's quite, uh, that's normal and also it's quite nice because it adds some um, very um, degrees of, of color in your, in your sky so it doesn't make it completely flat. Right, so we've got our first sort of um, ground background layer. So now we're going to add um, a bit of white towards the bit of white um, on our mix and sort of go over our layer again. And you can see you can blend it with the layer underneath. start building on the um, underneath sort of the, the, the lower part of the cloud with some slightly darker darker blue mix so I'm adding dark blue here a bit of white a bit of a uh, cerulean blue and a bit more of the phthalo blue which is the darker one and uh, we're going to start sort of placing our dark areas here so I'm being a little bit um, loose with my brush you know sort of dabbing because we don't want it it's not a rigid um a rigid cloud it's got a, it's got sort of curves and movements and and it's a bit loose so there you are and sort of slowly and now i'm going to add a little bit of purple you know so blue dark blue bit of purple bit of white Sort of to change the tones a little bit of our colour. Right, so we're just going to grab some more white and we're going to work from the bottom now, from the top to the bottom, sorry. And um, yes, bring in the, the lighter colour into the darker. So um, just sort of start building your your cloud up to, from the top to the bottom and meeting in the middle there so again quite loose need a bit of make make a bit more mix so we need to, need to keep on adding um, colors if we need on our palette so I'm just adding more white Um, and then we've got cloud here in the middle, so we're just going to base. So that's the underneath layer we're doing right now. So it's this sort of lighter blue. And we're, we're shaping our cloud. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly like this one. You can, you can, um, you can make your own shapes. 
it's just the the the, the technique sort of the sort of blending the um the whiter part into the darker part of the bottom right so might just layer a little bit more all the way to the edge here and we're being quite loose with our brush okay and sort of you know some of the colors from the the purple we might might add it to the top in some areas just just to give it some um fluffiness here inside inside the class so just grabbing a little bit of the darker mix and sort of patting patting it on the top of my lighter blue layer and start um creating volume and and shape here we go a field we should have one it's like one long cloud okay so now i'm going to start working from the bottom again so with the same brush i'm not cleaning it just a bit of purple some dark blue some um, lighter blue and that white mix we had earlier and a little bit more purple we like it tested on our on our palette here on our spare paper you can see it's got a lovely purple color to it so i'm going to start again from the bottom you can see here so a bit more of a darker layer and we're just um blending it into the the top bit so we're just going to build our cloud like this it's going to be uh, building on layers like this I'm using the flat the flat part of my brush and sort of really just building a bit of water and I'm going to add some more light now some lighter blue So I'm going to grab some white now, more white than blue, I would say. And and now we're going to apply it from the top of the clouds where it's obviously the brightest because that's where the sun's shining on the top. Uh, we're going to start sort of um, applying our brush and sort of applying little patches of white and then we'll work them down into the cloud. We're using a lot of white today. So uh, you should have plenty in your in your pack. So that should that will be fine. And so yeah, yes, we've got some white here. And just to show you, we're just sort of going to work our little way our way around like this. Right. I'm going to start. I've got a big cloud here. So this one. So dab your brush, the end of your brush. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit more blue to this um, uh, mix I've just done with the white and I'm just adding a bit of water to my brush and we're going to blend it very ever so slightly sort of to make it um, less sharp edges basically. So in a, in a again in a loose manner very sort of gently 
apply your brush flat down and um, sort of um, smooth the, the sharp edges, the sharp um, marks of your brush. There. And what we'll do is we'll do the same from the bottom now. We'll just have little pockets, little areas where there is a bit of white poking through. I'm going to do is now my background's dry. I'm going to add um, a diluted wash of, of lighter blue on top of it because I think it's quite dark what I've done there. Which is Now, because I'm adding some wet paint over the, the underneath layer, it's, it's reactivating the colour. So the, the colour blends in straight away on the paper. So what I'm doing now is I'm grabbing a bit more white and I'm sort of going to create those little clouds at the bottom. So these sort of gently, gently applied sort of in a line like this with the tip and the tip of your brush. I need a bit more white again. These are sort of our very low clouds, oh, just over the horizon. And um, yeah, sort of keep on adding, keep on building all over your cloud. And go a little bit in sort of semicircular motions just to, to make it show, to show that your cloud is moving in the sky. And make sure to dip some, get some white as well to, on the tip. Basically, it's like sculpting a cloud. grab some more um, darker blue here that mix here and I'm just going to work again through the middle now creating a layer a little bit um, darker just behind and um, so that it gives the impression there's a cloud in front of this cloud.
So now I've built it, I've built up a, a good amount of layers and I'm just going to try to sort of finish off um, the roundness of the clouds with the white on the tips. Um, yeah, so there's been a lot of layering. It's a slow building of the of the sort of of the volume, basically. edges and we're just sort of smoothing it down in little semicircles, feathering very gently um, with your brush going over to sort of smooth the edges. So barely, barely touching the paper and the paint and just really um, almost, um, yes, very, very, very gently stroking the paper. Right, so I've left this to dry now and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of sort of blending and smoothing just with our wet brush. So we're going to grab our flat brush and um, and this is the nice thing about gouache is it's, it's a very forgiving medium and you can sort of work over your areas you've already applied on the paper and you can work them again and again. So we're going to do that now. So with a wet brush what I want, I'm trying to do now is uh, all this sort of build-up of colours, I want to blend it a little bit more because um, I think there's some areas I feel need a bit more uh, smoothing over. So I'm just um, sort of going to go over it and very gently in, in a sort of a flat, flat application of my brush, I'm going to blend the colours in. Um, adding a bit of water, not too much, you don't want to, obviously you don't want to make it very wet. You just want to drag the pigments so that it's a little bit more um, smooth and um, sort of it, it blends in better.
keep on adding. We could stop now and then maybe um, when we've done the rest of the painting, we can go back to it and sort of adjust it um, if you if you feel like you need to, or you know, if I, if I towards the end decide that, oh, actually needs a little bit more um, movement or a little bit less, then um, yeah, it's something we can adjust at a later stage. So I'm gonna stop here and we're going to move on to um, step three here. We're going to do the C. So we're going to do a, a blue wash with a darker blue. Uh, and as we get towards the um, the flowers here, it'll be um, slightly lighter. So we add, we'll add a bit of white. And we're going to do the same dark blue wash um, across the land. So it's diluted here in front of the flowers and it's more opaque on, on the sea level. So um, good news is we don't need to change colors, so we are sticking with those, but we are going to use the darker blue this time. So the darker blue is the, um, phthal it's called phthalo blue. It's this one here, phthalo cyanine blue. So um, that's that, we get a good mix going there. And really the idea is that it's darker towards the in the distant and then it gets lighter as we get closer to the the shore so i'll start with mainly phthalo in fact on my palette i've got no cerulean blue so i'm just going to add a a spot there we go a pea-sized dot and i'm going to add some white as well just to have them ready to go a bit more of that dark blue there we are it's quite a large surface to paint in. So the um, way I've done it is I have left out the large flowers here. Just um, so if you can sort of leave these out um, because um, I think it'll be better to build the colours for these not on the blue but on sort of a dark orange and red. So otherwise just um, start from the back here. Now phthalo blue is a little bit more translucent. So... Um, Let's mix it with some cerulean blue. Cerulean blue has got more op opacity to it. Um, and that's what we want. We want it to be a, a little bit opaque. just adding a little bit of white to this mix now because as we get closer I'm going to try to make a, a bit light a bit sort of lighter color so I'm adding more cerulean blue which is more green and to the mix and a little bit more white
Right, so we've got our C now. We've got our layers, so I'm happy. And we're going to let that dry and we're going to fill in the land here. So I'm going to use the, the um, a diluted mix of that darker blue here and just sort of paint in the, the land here, the, this little bit of land. So I'm making it a little bit more diluted because um, the, we're going to build quite a few layers on it. So um, we're just doing a, a wash to cover it. So because we, we don't want to start um, our layers, building our layers on white, it needs to be, um, it's important to have sort of a, a background color uh, because it will stand out more and it will give it more depth as well. So we're just doing this part here. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna go all over the front um, and I'm gonna to try to avoid all the little daffodils, the little flowers, well, the big ones anyway. Don't worry too much about all the little ones. We'll, we'll add them at the end. So, but it's just sort of, there's a couple of larger ones here and here. So um, yes, just leave those out. Often a, a blank canvas can be um, intimidating and um, you know not knowing where to start with it because well there's nothing to to grip to grip to so um, the wash is really important to have in the background um, it helps it helps build um, depth and um, particularly in a landscape but equally in portraits or, or other other or still life, you still it's still important to have a, a background. Right, so we've got um, our wash over the land. Now I can see on on I can see on the sea here on my sea um, uh, flat wash. There's a couple of areas where there's a bit of white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit more mix of those blues, um, and. Uh, I'm going to go over it again. I'm going to add a bit of white so it's not as dark. And I'm going to make this a little bit diluted. So if you imagine, so that's that's the one I used for the C. So I'm going to go over it. So I need to make sure that it's a little bit lighter. There you go. So you can tell here, this is a bit lighter. And I'm going to use it a little bit diluted. And I'm going to let this dry now and then we'll move on to um, step four where we'll add burnt sienna on the land. So, right, so quick, um, quick break here where we've let this dry and, um, and now it's time to move on to um, step four where we're starting to build the land area. All the, all the bit on the left here and in the front. So we're going to um, change colour. So I've cleaned my palette and uh, for this now we're going to use uh, some burnt sienna. We're going to use the phthalo blue again, sorry, and some uh, black, particularly for the lower part here and sort of uh, the surrounding the land here and all the coast, the, the, the shore just there, uh, just to mark it a little bit. And then we're going to build our colours with the ochre and to make the, the landscape textured. So, um, yes, burnt sienna, 
is going to be our first port of call and some phthalo blue and some black. So now we've set the we've set the scene, we've got our background, we've got our sky, which which has been the sort of the the longest part, and now we're sort of building building at the front. So um, for this, I'm going to use my flat brush. Still we're sticking with the flat brush. But make sure you don't leave your brushes in your pot of water because they will end up with a with a flat tip, which is not not very handy. We want them to be um, nice and straight. Um, and so yes, I'm going to grab some burnt sienna, just um, a bit of water on my brush. So once again, we just try on our paper and sort of on our on our spare paper practice. Practice is always very important to see how it works. So we've got um, bone sienna, we're going to put it on the land here. So we don't want it to be too diluted because otherwise we're going to end up dragging the blue underneath. So we want it to be a bit opaque like this. work on the areas sort of not where the leaves are sort of on the uh, around the leaves if you can it I should say if you can do it not if you can eat so now I might use my round brush just because there's lots of little um, areas to to paint in. So the flat brush is handy for all those big uh, flat surfaces, flat washes, but the little round brush is easier to use for um, all the intricate areas. So we're working our way all the way through the, the front. So we've more or less um, covered the area. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of blue and a bit of black to this mix to make it uh, like a really dark version. So, and this mix, I'm now going to um, apply all along the, the, the outer um, shores 
um, just on the edges and a little bit in the front in a diluted way, just down here. So I've mixed the sienna with a bit of the phthalo blue and a bit of black. Adding a bit more blue. Yeah. And I'm just going to um, yeah, sort of create my edge. So I'm just running my, my um, round brush sort of the long the long side of it along the seashore and I'm just sort of creating a bit of um, a, a bit of sort of um, pattern here this to this is to represent the, the darkest part of the landscape just to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, we've got our darkest part. I'm just going to add a little bit more blue onto the sienna here. I'll show you on the reference card. Sort of underneath this area, we can see it's a little bit more blue, so I'm just going to uh, play with that. Right, so now we're going to move on to step five and um, the, my, I've left this to dry for a little bit and I'm cleaning my palette. So uh, for step five, we're going to start painting in all the textured area, all the sort of the rough areas on the landscape uh, and just to create some 3D um, aspects. So we're going to need some yellow ochre. So a pea size, we're going to need some burnt sienna again. That, that'll be our staple colors for, for now some green so i'm using deep green and some uh, phthalo blue as well and finally uh, we will also need some white All right, so just grabbing my practice sheet again because we're going to do some practice on here to see if we're happy with our colors and um yes we'll start with uh, the uh, building the yellow ochre in the background here. Okay, so with our flat brush, we're going to mix some yellow ochre, so not too much water on the brush. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and we're going to start um, building with the flat part of our brush, sort of um, the landscape a little bit like this. So we can do several mixes of this um, yellow, red, and a little bit of green. Uh, because obviously um, it has different um, sort of aspects here in the landscape. Um, and again, it's, it's, you know, that's something that you can choose to, uh, to change the color. You can make it lighter with a bit of white. Um, and we're going to start building our land. So um, just load your brush with one of your mixes. I'm going to go with the greener, the greener version for sort of the underneath layer. So start with your darker mix if you have made a couple of mixes like me. Could even add a bit of blue. Yeah. And we're going to start sort of placing our our landscape a little bit in the same manner as we did it with the um with the lighthouse actually. So I'm not going all the way to the top to the edge of the cliff. I'm leaving that darker because uh, just to add a bit of perspective and there we are so flat flat brush and I'm going to grab the lighter one the lighter color and I'm going to go around the bottom area so um but it's quite nice to have several 
level colors on your brush it makes it makes it um, like there's volume and, and perspective rather than a flat completely flat color uh, I'm leaving some um, underneath color uh, visible and I'm going to do a lighter mix with yellow ochre and white and whatever um, color I had on my brush from from these two mixes and that will sort of apply it sort of loosely on the top and sort of build my it's, it's a bit like rocks building rocks and uh, placing the color well, I'm going to do the same here as you can see on this picture sort of work, working my way ar along the coast so here we have yellow red and green and a little bit of blue and um, here we have just yellow and red sienna burnt sienna mixed together and here is um, yellow and white so I've got three sort of three different colors to work with so I'll start with the darker one again and there you are and I'm just working working my way sorry working my way along the coast Um, don't worry if you go over the leaves here because we'll paint over it anyway. So I'm not covering everywhere. I'm just leaving some some areas um, with with the background, the initial background, and some areas I'm just covering with. I'm starting to build my colors. So now I'm going to use the mid middle mix. Sorry. And the, the sort of more red one. Um, And grabbing some yellow ochre and white so slightly lighter lighter mix and sort of I'm going to apply this on the top here sort of in a as if the, the hill there's a hill going down like sort of chalky hill going down so you could add more white if you wanted to make it a bit brighter or if you wanted to add some sort of um, almost like a chalk cliff elements here A bit abstract I'll add some green here So the nice thing with gouache is you can just um, layer your colour and it really sort of builds up and creates this, this lovely um, superposition of colours. Um, you know, I'm just applying a bit of colour here and there. So once we've built our flowers and our leaves and our and our petals, we'll have this coming through. Um, so. So it's nice to um, to add touches of color and 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 pockets of of light and yellow ochre just just to see through. Right. Just to build like a little inland here. Have a bit of red and I'm just going to sort of add a bit more red in there just to make it stand out a bit more and here on the, on the shore like this
there. Okay, and then I'm going to grab some blue, mix that with dark sienna like this. Let me create a dark, so the dark mix, and uh, we'll have that sort of coming on the coast here. There. And I'm going to rinse my brush, and I'm going to, the final touches I'm going to do is on the coastline here, I'm going to add some, um, a sort of a thin line of yellow ochre and white. Um, sort of a mix of these two two sort of mixes here just to mark the line almost not the beach because um, but just sort of where the land um, comes to contact with the water so um, with the flat end of your brush just load it with some paint and just uh, run it on the edge there Okay, so now we are moving on to our step six. And for step six, we're going to start mixing greens together. So we're going to need some black uh, and uh, the other green, which is the Viridian green. So it's a brighter green. And we can also keep with the blue because um, we'll use it to darken our colors. And we're going to do a similar we're going to do a similar way um, as we did for the land is we're going to create different um, different types of mixes and we'll alternate between each to create to build our, our, la our layers of, um, of leaves and obviously we'll start with the dark ones and we'll slowly build on top and we'll finish at the end we'll finish with the daffodils and the yellow on the leaves so um, yeah start mixing green so I'm grabbing Viridian green and deep green um, I'm adding some black some blue so that's quite a dark mix. So you can try it on your on your spare paper, and it's, it's quite it's quite dark. So um, I like the idea that there's blue in it, so it doesn't completely um, mattify the 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 color, because the black can sort of dull colors. It's a bit like white; it just kind of dulls it a little bit. So um, if you add dark blue, then it kind of works. There. Right, and for this, you can use your round brush because now we're working on, on, on those uh, leaves and they've got pointy ends, so we can, we can swap to this and, and sort of um, what we'll do is we'll build a few really dark ones and then we'll start, we'll start again with um, a green mix. Um, in fact, we'll need some more yellow ochre. So starting with our dark ones, our dark leaves, and um, just going to build a few on here.
Okay, so now um, the dark leaves are all in place and we're going to start uh, building our lighter uh, stems and leaves. So for that, we're going to use, um, you can see my wash has dried a little bit. We're going to use some yellow ochre to lighten the green. So um, just grab some yellow like this and start mixing it in your green mix and we're sort of obtaining a khaki kind of color and that's going to be sort of the basis of all our all our leaves and the stems of the flowers so in this mix you have deep green put some more on you've got viridian green or sort of the lighter green and um, some yellow ochre uh, some blue and a little bit of black so we'll we're now sort of moving on to uh, the greens and the yellow ochre and a bit of blue. So, there. so now we're going to paint on other leaves over overlapping the ones we've already painted. So sort of start again, you know, um, paint them in. And we're going to repeat that until we have a nice layer of leaves. So in this uh, step, we're also going to paint in the stems of the flowers. For that, you need a little bit of water on your brush because um, it's a it's a thin line, it's a thinner line, I would say. Um, so it needs your brush needs to glide on the needs to be able to glide on the paper, you know, the paint. There. Got one here. So we'll go over it again. So don't worry if it's a bit dark, it's always best if it's darker underneath and we're building on uh, lighter, lighter layers on top.
So um, we're moving sort of slowly. We're making our way between step six and step seven, where we keep on adding yellow ochre to uh, lighten our green and to build our leaves. And then, um, and then we'll move on to step eight, where we're going to start to build the, the flowers. So um, I've done sort of three different uh, layers of greens. I'm going to add one more with more yellow ochre and a little bit of white. So with this particular mix that's a little bit lighter, what we're going to try to do as well is build on our stems sort of just a little line to um, highlight where the light is and sort of the higher part. And we'll grab some um, burnt sienna at, afterwards to do just the top of the stems. So we'll start there. It probably needs a bit more yellow ochre for this. So I'm painting in half half leaves now. I'm not painting uh, f just full new ones. I'm also highlighting the ones I did earlier. Um, and a little bit scattered across the front here. So I'm going to start here with the leaves and now I'm going to move on to step eight where we are starting to paint our flowers. So I'm going to get a clean palette, clean brushes and then we're going to start to build our oranges and yellows and we'll finish with the white for the light. Now we're going to do step eight and for that we'll need some yellow and some red and some white. So we've got um, vermilion red some yellow and I've put a bit of yellow ochre as well. Some white. I've run out of white because I did quite a few tutorials so I'm just using a different gouache. And uh, what else do we need? That's it really. That's it. So uh, I've got some crimson red. So we can add a bit of crimson red. Crimson red is the more um, pink the red. Right. And um, we're going to build, we're going to start with a mix of red and yellow to sort of build a, an orange base layer for our flowers and place them around the background. So once your leaves have dried, you are able to start. So your brush is very handy because it's got a lovely shape and it will just um, sort of uh, do the, the, the shape of the petals really nicely. So if you just press your brush down and then sort of release. Now, as you can see, it's relatively translucent, this color. So that's why we're, we're starting with a darker mix and then we'll build slowly to a lighter, a lighter color at the end. I haven't put enough yellow, so we need a bit more yellow, but be a bit more generous like this. Some red.
So our first layer of orange mix is sort of dry now. And we're going to be able to build up now with the yellow um, and the white on top of it. So um, best to do is to grab some clean yellow. Now here we go. And we're going to go over our petals all over again with just the yellow now. And this, this second layer will be more opaque over the first one. So it will um, absorb the transparency and you'll start seeing the, the building of the colors. So if you see here on, on my little spare paper, I'll just demonstrate. If you apply a layer on top, then it just really adds, it becomes more opaque um, as opposed to um, the first layer where you can still see see through. So you'll need a bit more, quite a lot of yellow actually. There we are. And I suggest to use your pointy brush, your round brush again. And go over your, your petals you have applied. So now I'm mixing my white and yellow to get a lighter, a lighter yellow, and I'm going to go over my petals again. So not everywhere, sort of in, on the edges of the petals and sort of. Just going over the some of the edges. Right, so I've done my lighter part, so I'm going to let this dry. And whilst this is drying, we're going to grab our um, burnt sienna and uh, yellow ochre, and we're going to do just a, sort of the top of the stems here. So um, just a bit of burnt sienna, maybe a bit more, sorry. There you are. And we've got some yellow ochre here, here on the palette. So... Um, yeah, with the thin brush, staying with the thin brush on this uh, on this part of the painting, we're just going to mix those two colors and build. It's just that little bit at the top of the 
just before the flower. So we'll go with, with a more red mix to start off with. Yeah. And we'll add some yellow on top. So just watch where all your little flower stems are like this. Got a few, got one here. And then we just make up some <laughs> if you haven't painted them in. Oh, and then this is this one here as well. Here we go. So I'm not covering the whole stem, just that top bit there. And now I'm going to come back with some just more yellow ochre. So you can see it's much lighter. And just sort of apply that to the top edge with the brush like this, with the point of my brush. And we'll come back one more time with um, a much lighter a much lighter mix. Um, so now we're going to um, use those mixes here and we're going to add some lighter um, areas on our, on our leaves like this and then we'll finish with the white as soon as my petals are dry and yours um, with some white and some red on the, on the heart of the flowers. So um, right now we're just going to work on the highlights on our leaves. Oh, here comes the sun. It's been gone all morning. So now you can see it a little bit brighter. Uh, I need more yellow and that really is just to add some highlights on our leaves so you know it's too that's too orange <laughs> uh, let's go a little bit more yellow ochre yeah that's better it's even a bit of red yeah. okay so um just a few highlights here what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some green because um, they're a bit pink, a bit too pink for my liking. So just add some green to those those mixes here, just to get back to um to our um, leaves uh, hue really. So I've got some white now. We're going to our last phase now to step nine and we're adding the yellow on the, uh, sorry, the white on the flowers and a little bit of white in the sea and the red in the heart of the flowers. So make sure your brush is really nice and clean. I'm going to get some clean white on the other side. <clears throat> So for this, uh, make sure your brush isn't too wet. We need um, a good sort of thick consistency. Um, so if you just uh, check, check on your palette, on your, sorry, on your spare paper how it works. And if you're happy with it, we're going to um, build our, our light, um, sort of little light areas on our, on our flowers. 
So once again, it's, it's more sort of on the outside of the petals and not everywhere. So, um, you know. Yeah, and I'm going to um, I'm going to use the same brush with a little bit more water this time. And on the C area, I'm just going to create some sort of this the the little waves that come near the shore, sort of, and that's going to overlap a little bit on the land. So you can use a little bit more diluted uh, white paint. And um, yes, I've just added some there. It's just little details, really. Um, almost like the foam and the waves touching the shore. The red, so I'll just turn the palette around and maybe add a bit more vermilion, although we won't need too too much. And all we're going to do is sort of um, place place some red at the end of our of our flowers, just with the tip of your brush. Um, do little dots. And then I'm just looking a little bit all over if there's anything that I need to sort of improve on. So you, you may you will notice that this yellow is a little bit more orange than here, but that's a lot due to the quality of the print. So don't be put off by this. Uh, I'm going to use some more yellow just to get over my petals one more time. And I like to build up sort of the um, the layers and the, and the thickness. I think it really is quite nice. It gives some, it gives the flowers some life. Um, so I'm just sort of going over them again with a bit more um, layers and a bit more thickness. So you can do that as well if you want. Um,
So I'm going to stop here. And you've got your daffodils. Um, so this is my version. So it's been a lot, a lot of learning in this in this tutorial. Sort of flat washes, build up the cloud, um, sort of how to create land, um, and sort of different um, varied um, ruggedy aspects, and then how to build this front layer with all the different layers of um, uh, the different mixes of green. So just to just a different way to to create um, some artwork. So we finished our project today and here is the version I did with you on the tutorial. So um, yes, lots of oranges and, and yellows on the front and a lot of work has gone into the clouds which you'll have followed with me. I hope you've enjoyed this and that you have um, have been inspired. Perhaps you can uh, go and uh, look for photographs and do some other compositions. So don't forget to share with us on our Facebook community page or on Instagram. We absolutely love to see the work you do and really thank you so much for um, take, taking this journey with us. Next month we are doing a mixed media and for that we will be using watercolours and soft pastels which is a lovely combination so I hope you join us for this um, in the April box. Until then, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.